it's day two in Lisbon, Portugal. And my sleep schedule was so rocky last night. So my body, of course, is used to the time in the United States. And so it was like, I want to say 10 o'clock there, 4 o'clock here. I, and I just, I woke up and I just was like, I got to go back to sleep. We have a full day today. We're gonna just do some walking around and seeing some castles and some sights. It's rainy again today, but I think the temperature is supposed to be maybe about 58, 60. Um, it'll just be kind of rainy, but this is the view. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wash my face because I have not done that yet and throw some clothes on. I don't know if I wanna wear sweatpants or um, some more spandex hiking pants. I'm not sure what today's outfit is going to be, but it'll be comfortable. So. so with my sleep schedule off, Jonathan had already woken up before me. He'd already left to kind of go sightseeing. I wasn't sure what the weather was going to hold for me being that I'm in an unknown place. So I did choose to just do some sweatpants and a thermal and an overcoat, just like a light rain jacket, just to make it through the day. Breakfast, of course, is going to be different from the United States, but I made sure to get something that I felt would get me the energy to be able to at least make it through the morning and into lunch. We are getting ready to go to the train station to go to Centra. Daddy is currently trying to get like directions to how to get there we were going to uber to the train station but um, he didn't think it was that far is that it oh it's not that's what i'm saying is you said this you said that's one right there We elected to take a Uber. It was like eight euro from our hotel to the train station. And it was much faster than trying to take the bus. I like something burning. Oh, it is burning. So the train station is pretty much centralized. It looks like this big, beautiful castle building, but it's actually their train station. When you first walk in, there's a Starbucks to your right and a monitor to kind of let you know what times the trains are leaving and where which platforms you can find them on. You take an escalator up to the third floor and that's where you purchase your tickets. <laughs> Y'all, I really don't know why at my big grown age, I cannot get on or off an escalator without feeling like I'm going to bust my butt. Uh, two tickets to Sintra. Thank you. Did you want to go try and find a sweatshirt or you just want to? Lucky for us, there were a couple of shops not too far from the train station, maybe about a five, six minute walk from the train station. We did see a couple of different stores. H&M was the one that we were most familiar with, of course. 
Well, before we actually hit H&M, we did come across this Foot Locker, which was literally by luck because we almost walked right past it. Jonathan was able to find a nice sweatshirt in his size that was comfortable and warm. Again, the weather was like 58, maybe 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Era, and a light jacket, a sweater, sweatshirt, something like that is definitely going to be needed to make sure that you're warm out here. We did get to see some really nice sights as well as shops on our way back to the train station. A lot of the little shops did have uh, some sales going on. We didn't do any shopping just because we knew we wouldn't have anywhere to put the stuff, but it is still nice to sightsee and see all the beautiful items that were for sale. Again, if you are planning on coming over here, just know that there is a lot of walking. Just be prepared. Look at the Christmas store. After about a six to eight minute walk, we did make it back to the train station. Our train was on platform five. It wasn't to depart until 1041, but at about 1035, it looked as if all the car doors were closing. We did come to the conclusion that as the train cars got full, the doors just automatically closed. We got to the car that we were gonna be sitting in and it was plenty of seats left. So we decided to make our way to the front of the car just to give us a little bit of room to be more comfortable, not having to share seats with anyone. It took us about 30 to 40 minutes just because the train was going to be making multiple stops until we made it to Century. We have made it off the train and Centra. And I think he's trying to figure out what we're gonna do. <laughs> Weather in central Portugal in January usually can range between 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It is located in western Portugal. It is about 15 miles west northwest of Lisbon. Sintra is said to be one of the most urbanized and most populated municipalities of Portugal. It's a major tourist destination because of its beautiful picturesqueness. The municipality has several historic palaces, castles, beaches, as well as parks and gardens. The town of Sintra is in the foothills of the Sintra Mountains. The region is hilly, forested, and it is dotted with fairy tale like palaces and villas throughout, which makes it a must see if you're going to visit. <laughs> Come on, doggy. Get ahead of the camera, doggy. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Mama. Mm -hmm. Museum Angels, Texas. This is my, this, this is my relative. Hey. Don't get stuck up there. I hope, I hope not either. Hey, hold on. We got fruit trees. 
There's no... Are they okay? We, in fact, were not okay. <laughs> As I mentioned, with all the walking, the valleys were very hilly. It was a lot of uphill for this walk. And uh, we thought we had prepared, but obviously not. Definitely got to be in some type of shape to not be uh, suffer <laughs> suffering. <laughs> no. Sorry, we ran up a mountain. <laughs> we did. Mm -hmm. We just walked. Oh man. <laughs> I get my life to go. The views were absolutely breathtaking, and I'm glad that we chose to walk instead of taking one of the little trolley tuk tuk but it was a lot of walking. There's so much to see and explore. Downtown, you can stroll the streets and see history. You've got Pinna Palace, which is hidden in the forest with wondrous mysteries. Puerta de Regulera is about two steps away from downtown, give or take. You have the Moorish Castle Ruins, which sit majestically on a hilltop, and also the National Palace, which is unmistakable with its two high chimneys. Oh, we're going the wrong way. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought we had to go up another hill, but thankfully we do not have to go up another hill. We, I think, get to walk downhill, which is always better and easier. Quinta de Regulera is a beautiful estate. It's located near the historic center of Sintra. The land on which the palace stands belonged to the Viscountess of Regulera, a family of wealthy merchants from Porto. Jonathan is terrified of heights, but he conquered his fear and went up on the tower. While standing in the gardens of Quinta de Regulera, from a distance, you can actually see the ruins of the mighty castle, which is the castle of the Moors. Beautiful in here. 
actually walk through. How do we get to the entrance? I think I walk around. Oh, okay. And come back down through here. Oh, okay. There were absolutely so many breathtaking places to take pictures. The initiation well can be found on the historic estate. It is actually a ceremonial well and it features a spiral staircase into a tunnel system. There's so much beauty to see before you even make it into the castle. So stay tuned for our next vlog where we actually take you through and explore the castle of Quinta de Vida.